Hey what's up guys and welcome back to a short review of the month of use of the fake MacBook Air. In this video I want to show you how it performs and if it's actually worth the money. By the way, I couldn't install Hackintosh on it because it's not compatible with the integrated graphics. Okay, so now let's get started with the review. Okay, so here it is. Here's the fake MacBook with the plastic unibody. And now let's turn it on by pressing the power button here. And then we press F2 because first, before we start it, I want to show you the BIOS and what you can edit in the BIOS. Okay guys, we're now in the main screen of the BIOS. And as you can see, it's running a 2011 version of the American Megatrends BIOS. And here on the main screen, you can set the system language, also time and date if you want to. Then let's go to the boot screen. Here you can enable or disable the SATA controller and you can also switch SATA mode. You can switch between IDE and AHCI mode, but be aware of that. If you change that, you also have to change that in your operating system, otherwise it will not boot. Then we got several other boot options and here under hard drive options, you can see that one Western Digital 500 gigabyte hard drive is included. Okay, then let's go to the security tab. You can set an administrator or user password. But yeah, I don't need that. But if you need that, you can do it here in the BIOS. But except of that, there is nothing much to adjust. So basically, that's everything. Here on the last screen, we have save and exit. You can save your changes here and you can also restore the defaults if you fuck it up. And yeah, basically, that's it. It is also capable of launching eFi shells from a file system device like a USB drive. Okay, then now let's go out of the BIOS and let's boot this device here. Okay, that's it, we are out of the BIOS and now it's booting. And as you can see, I have dual boot set up on this device here so I can choose between Windows 7 and Linux. I'm running Backtrack on this device and basically that's my main usage. I'm using it to carry it around, test Wi-Fi on different places and also to code some little scripts on it. And I will explain why in a second. Okay, so the notebook has now booted up Windows 7, which was, by the way, pre-installed on this device here. Not sure if activated or not, but we will later check that out. And the booting time was really long, so it was about two minutes. Then I have also connected a USB mouse because working on the touchpad here is really annoying. I mean, the touchpad is good, it is working, but yeah, it's such a plastic touchpad and I don't like working on it. And I've also connected my power adapter here. And it's not a MagSafe connector, so it's just a cheap DC in connector. I think they're also clones with a MagSafe adapter, which would be much cooler. And the keyboard, it's also made out of plastic, like the whole body, and it feels pretty good, but the real one feels much better. It's so smooth on the real one, and on the fake one, it feels a little bit cheaper. In case you have missed the unboxing, let me quickly show you the connectors. So here we have the power connector. It's just a cheap d connector. Right from it, we have a big USB 2.0 port, a headphone jack, and a little microphone. And here we have this really cool and fancy looking Ethernet port. You have to open it up, and then you can plug in your Ethernet cable. Okay, so that's it, and now let's check out the other side. Here on this side, we have a big USB 2.0 port. I've connected my mouse to it. Right from it, we have a mini HDMI port. And here on the left side, we have a card reader for SD cards. The build quality is pretty okay for a plastic unibody. I still have the issue that the frame is coming off here and that there is a gap between the display and the frame, but except of that, it's okay. And I would rate the build quality with six out of 10 points. And once again, here you can see the full notebook. So the build quality is pretty okay, but you have to watch out if you open it up. As you may have seen, I've opened it up and you have screws all along the frame here and you have to watch out because those screws are different. So the screws on the back side are a little bit longer than the screws here on the front side. And if you mix them up like me, then the screws come through the plastic body. So this almost happened to me, so be careful when you open it up to upgrade the RAM or something. So that was the build quality, and now let's check out the performance. So as you can see, this notebook is running Windows 7. Not that smooth, it could be a little bit smoother if you have activated the transparent glass theme and you drag and drop around Windows here around the screen, then you can see that there is a little lag. But now let's check out the hard drives. And the hard drive has 500 gigabytes, but came with four partitions. And the main partition where Windows was pre-installed only has 50 gigabytes, so pretty funny, but actually also good because if you want to install uh, more operating systems, then you don't have to repartition your hard drive. Then now let's take a look at the webcam. 
And the webcam is nothing special, so it's just a VGA webcam with a resolution of 640 times 480 pixels, but it's capable of taking pictures, recording videos, using it in Skype or any other application. And you can see it here on the top of the frame right over the display. Okay, so that was the webcam and now let's try to play back a test movie to see if the movie playback is laggy or not. Okay, so I'm starting it for the first time, so just give me a second. And we can also test the speakers this way. Okay, so let's make it a little bit bigger. And there we go. So the movie playback is okay, it's not laggy, but on maximum volume you have this hissing sound in the speaker, so the speakers are not the best quality, but they are loud. Then now let's try the same on YouTube. So I've now connected my Ethernet cable, but I'm also connected to Wi-Fi. And now here in Firefox let's try to playback a movie here on YouTube. Oh those fucking ads. No I'm just kidding, ads are important, so don't use an ad blocker guys. Now that was movie playback, pretty good, and now let's talk about gaming. Oh yeah, I'm so excited, this notebook raised childhood memories, and do you want to know why? Because my Intel Pentium 3 with a GeForce 2 MX was running the games equally or better. I couldn't even play Minecraft on the lowest settings with Optifine, I just got about 1 FPS. Same for Trackmania, oh wait, it didn't even start, so I had to dig out Counter-Strike 1.6 because otherwise I just could play Minesweeper. Also 1.6 has some lags in between as you can see, so forget about playing on this device, it's just a working notebook. And that's because the GPU is integrated, and also the Intel Atom CPU is a very weak CPU, it's designed for providing good mobility and not gaming. So it offers good 2 to 2.5 two hours of battery lifetime. And now regarding the performance, let us check out the Windows Experience Index. So the Windows Experience Index rates your system and then you get a number which tells you something about the performance of your system. Here we get 3.2, so what does it mean? The Windows Experience Index basically rates your system and the score which you can see here on the right side is based on the lowest score of a single component. And the slowest component here is the CPU, which only gets a score of 3.2. And the maximum score which you can get is 7.9, so a base score of 3.2 tells you that the system may be slow. Then here you can see installed memory RAM are 4 GB, but only 3 GB are usable. A 32-bit system should be capable of using 4 GB, but the chipset isn't compatible, so you cannot upgrade it. Only 3 GB are usable. But anyway, you don't need more RAM because the CPU is the slowest part here in the system. Then here we have Windows activation, so it's not activated, we got a 30 days trial. And yeah, it's actually good that those Chinese sellers don't sell you um, pirated versions of Windows, so just enter your own product key. Great, so that was the performance index, but the performance index here doesn't tell you much about the system. Therefore we will check out CPU set and PC Mark 8. And PC Mark 8 is a benchmarking tool and the benchmark takes really long, so I will do that off camera. But first let's check out CPU set. And here we can see the CPU is an Intel Atom D2500. D stands for dual core, 2500 is just a model. And this CPU is coming with two real cores with two threads and each core is running at about 1.9 GHz. It's designed to have a low power consumption, so the TDP is only about 10 watts. On the newer Intel Atom models, it's less, it's 2 or 5 watts. And also the mainboard and the chipset is made by Intel, so it's the Tiger Hill or Tiger Point NM10 chipset. Then now let us check out memory. So here we can see that 4 GB of DDR3 RAM are installed and the DRAM frequency is only 532 MHz. So this results in a front side bus to DRAM ratio of, of about 1 to 4. Then here we can see the memory slots and CPU set tells us that there are two memory slots but I have opened it up and I've just seen one memory slot. 
So we have one memory slot with 4 GB of DDR3 RAM and that's it. But not all the 4 GB are usable so you can just use about 3 GB and also not with the maximum bandwidth which would be 800 MHz. Then here you can see the graphics and as I said this is integrated, the GPU is integrated and it's an Intel GMA3600. Okay, so that was CPU set and now let's check out the benchmarking application which is PCMark8. So let's take a look at the results and we get a score of 626 and that's not really much. So on my notebook I get about 5k points so that's really much more and the test duration was about 75 minutes. That's a long time because my notebook does the test in about 20 minutes. And once again you can see that this notebook is designed for mobility, multimedia and working and not for gaming because in the casual gaming test it just got 1.5 fps. So at least for the price you get a slim netbook with 4GB of RAM but only 3GB are usable and a 500GB western digital hard drive. Now that's it. We are at the end of this video and I hope you still enjoyed it and if you really want to get such a netbook be sure to get the model with the Intel i3 CPU and maybe aluminum unibody. I would rate this one with 5 out of 10 points, maybe give it an extra half point for the cheap price, but the real one is definitely unbeatable. So guys, watch out when you buy a notebook in China. Okay, then as always, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again in my next videos. Bye bye guys!